Greetings, munchkins and viewers alike. It's me, Munchie, and welcome to the video you've all been waiting for. Introducing today only the Rescue Pet Room Tour. Enjoy. And welcome to the Pet Room. <laughs> Anyways, let me just close the door here. I went ahead and turned my air purifier off uh, before I started filming because it's quite loud, but that is what that is in the corner over there. So let's start off with this side right here. This is my everything I'm currently using section. So let's start from the top. And by the way, I'm sorry if it's dark in here. Uh, this was not my choice of wallpaper. <laughs> I mean, I love purple and I love maroon and I just, it's a stylish and gorgeous color, but it's just, it makes the room so dark. It also is echoey in here because if you look up, we have vaulted ceilings up there and they have such a beautiful ceiling too. But the problem is, is that this wallpaper is not doing that ceiling any justice. Nope, nope, nobody, nope. So <laughs> I'm sorry if it's dark in here, but I have the window open, so hopefully that helps. But to the left is just random bins that I actually, the green ones, I used to store the chew toys in until I got too many chew toys toys where I just, I couldn't store them in there anymore. And under that we have some boxes here. Now these boxes that you see right here are used for hamsters or any small animals because we currently have a mouse right now, Bruno. Um, they are used for if one of them passes within our care because we've had a problem in the past where we just don't know where any really small size boxes that we can bury the animal in. And so we've just been collecting boxes that seem like a really good size for them. So that's my pile right there. Um, um, unfortunately this year there has been a lot of passings and quick passings and just random passings and so we just got to be prepared and this is what it is and then over here is the food that we are currently using uh, the oxbow as you see over there is the guinea pig because we have guinea pigs and then I have my weighing scale here for the small animals and then the weighing little bucket that I have for them there uh, you guys remember the market medley yep I just mixed it into the regular seed mix because it's not a bad seed mix but you definitely need to add some sort of other protein like a lab block in there um, but I have Higgins sunburst I use so why would I use market medley unless for instance I go and I have a coupon or it's on sale something like that it is a decent food but it's not the food that I currently recommend but it's okay this is what they're all eating now there are some pieces from the KT in here uh, mixed in and of course when I dump it all out I pick them out but there has been some donations food like you can see right there and I just kind of pick the colorful like this one too right here I just pick the colorful pieces out uh, just as I'm pouring it. it makes it a lot easier than just going through the entire bag but I got the food that we're feeding them here just all around here and then we got the treats right here uh, we have a lot of treats so we don't need any more until these are gone and treats are just once in a blue moon you know once or twice a week no more in small moderation and then we have these right here that you guys probably will recognize. I have started using them for food and treats because they're really good at storing bags and treats in here. And chews. We have such a large array of chews. I'll let you take a peek here. There's just so many chews in here and we got a bunch of chews over there. You guys are probably wondering, oh well if you have so many of these, um, that means you must have a lot of animals, right? Uh, right now we do have what you currently see which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Uh, there's three baby student hamsters in that bottom one right there, so they're going to be getting their own enclosures in the future, but this is all that we currently have right now because the rest of our animals are in foster homes. But it is a good idea to store up food, store up treats and chews, not give them all what we have because we need to be mindful of how long they're going to be staying with us because Echo right over there, she's been here for oh goodness it's been since March so April May June July August September October November so she's been here for roughly about eight months now isn't that crazy so we got to be thinking about well how long are they gonna be staying with us what if we intake more animals but this is all that we can have right now that we feel comfortable with in the past if you look on this side we have had 
these shelves filled up and these shelves filled up and we've actually had them filled up all the way to the sky here. That's when I actually had my second job and because I don't have my second job right now, I cannot help as many animals. But we are taking in a bunch of new applicants for foster homes. So the animals are getting split into their care and so that's why you don't see a lot at the, what I call the main home. This is kind of the main home because this is where it started and this is all, like I said, foster based. We are a foster based rescue. But anyways, let's go back. So. Down here, it is the bedding and bedding down here as well. Clean and cozy, I have issues with uh, just because every time I put like five to six inches of bedding in there and it just, it compacts down so quickly whenever they run and step on it, it's not staying fluffy for very long. So I'm actually considering using the Carefresh again just because I know it's really dusty, it's, it's pretty bad, but it is better when it comes to odor control as well as it still has that nice rounded shape. It doesn't get as flat as the clean and cozy. But anyways, just a note on that. We got the sand in here, the play sand that has been sterilized. They've been really liking that. I got my broom here. I got my little stepping stool because of course you saw back there, I had a really large shelf. We got Missouri uh, rodents blocks since we are using up the donated KT blocks right now. We haven't even opened this bag. Oh, it's just such a big bag, oh my goodness. And a donator actually donated that. So thank you so much. And I believe, because I'm starting to get very fuzzy in my memory, but I believe this was also from an adopter, but I can't remember who and I'm so sorry. But we got donated Aspen, which is awesome because that's what the guinea pigs are currently on. They were driving me crazy taking away all of my paper. Paper for guinea pigs. Don't do it. It's awful. No, just no. Carefresh is okay, but no. Anyways, I got dirt because some of the uh, Syrians love the dirt. And here are the um, my review stash. <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of things you'll see in the this room I actually want to keep around and like make educational videos and stuff. So all these you see right here, like that. Yeah, I know, danger, danger. I will be reviewing that, I promise. And then don't I have the, yeah, right behind there. Um, and then of course that, that food, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna be reviewing these. Um, so I just have them down there for right now. So let's walk over to this side. Now I have some hay right here and then you guys are probably wondering what, what's that? Now, I have had escapees in the past. Lesson learned, <laughs> but if any hamster, gerbil or mouse were to escape and they had no way to access water while they're you know out and about, they need to have, and you guys at home should have a stand up water source that you have around the room just in case, because if your hamster uh, needs water, they're gonna seek out water. And so once they memorize where this is, they'll come back to it. And I try to tell a lot of people in my hamster group whenever somebody says, oh, my hamster escaped, which is so often, but oh my, hamster escaped and I don't know how to lure it back and the bucket method does help but you should also be providing water and food because if they get dehydrated they can have their organs start shutting down their body starts getting weaker and weaker you don't want that you don't want that for your hamster who's escaped water source water source so they could just come over here they drink it you can put some seed around here that way they are familiar with this area and will come back to it so keep that in mind that is a godsend. Even though ever since I put that down there, I've had <laughs> nobody escape. Um, when Star was here, Star was testing out one of my cages that I have actually over here disassembled. And we found out later that, that she could squeeze through the bars. How about that, hmm? But as you see here, this is my old dresser. Now my father made me this dresser when I was not even born yet. Yep, it was in the nursery. And so over the years, I kind of put a bunch of stickers on here. I guess I could showcase this. People of the past kind of recognize this, but for people who don't or haven't been around my channel since 2010, 11, 12, 13. You probably haven't seen this, but there it is. And you wanna know what my favorite sticker is? Mewtwo! I got this really huge Mewtwo sticker back when the first movie came out and when it was still in season one or season two of Pokemon before the Orange Islands. Oh, it was just so much fun. But I have in here all of these. Yes, we keep the KT and the Tiny Tails tubes because they are great for mice and dwarf hammies, but this is what I have in here. Woo! I guess I could just show you all of what I have. Then there's these. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll be showing you a bunch of drawers today. 
some of these. These are great for when we had the baby Syrians, and we, of course, have baby Syrians again. So there is two wheels being in use, um, and then there's other two wheels that are being cleaned right now because it is my cleaning day. So a lot of these things uh, that I have, you might not see because they are, one, being loaned to uh, our foster homes and two, because um, they're currently being cleaned in my kitchen right now. On top here, you see some more stackables. Uh, this is the guinea pigs medicine right now. Hand sanitizer, use it, use it, use it. Especially if you have multiple animals. Um, but just water bottles, water bottles, water bottles, food bowls, and then over here, a bunch <laughs> of clips for the previews bunch of these. These are handy for travel carriers, by the way, because we make the critter trails into travel carriers if they are the good kind. I'll go over that here in a little bit. But some more treats, baby food. This is for the uh, baby hamsters. We got yeast over there. Uh, what else? We have the critical care in case I ever need to use this. I've only used it once. Um, and then we got the chia seeds. Chia, 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 chia. Some more treats. And some more treats, pumpkin seeds up here. Yeah, we, we got a lot of stuff. I think we're good. <laughs> but like I said before, it's best to have that stuff and just keep it than just use it all at once. Be reasonable. Anyways, over here, we have our bins all lined up here because they're not in use right now. But this is kind of the bins that the baby steering hamsters are gonna be going in once they are able to be separated. And so this is the 200 quart, 50 gallon sterilette bin cages or sterilite, whichever you say it. But anyways, uh, this one is the side facing, this one is the top, and then this one down here is also the top. And then if we go over here, this is kind of like my cleaning corner, however there has been bins over here in the past, so I just have to put this away. But below are just items that are currently not being in use. That is what the guinea pigs came with. They came with the Living World Extra Large Cage, not the deluxe, not the regular, not the large, the extra large. And so the extra large is actually pretty doable. Now in here, these are the uh, not in use items. And as you can see in here, uh, yes, we have exercise balls. I've made a statement in the past where I would prefer uh, play pins. However, guinea pigs currently have my play pins right now. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately I have kind of resulted in going back to the balls for just right now. Uh, of course, they are in their own secure room. They can roll around. Um, I just keep them in there for about 15 to 20 minutes, um, especially waffles. Waffles, oh, she needs, she needs extra time. She needs extra attention. But I only use these if I cannot use the playpen. And I keep them around just for the purpose of if they need more time. Because as you know, I just, sometimes if we're really full in here, you just, you can't get daily handling of all the animals. That's the difference between personal care and rescue care. Where rescue, you do provide them a place to go, but you won't be able to provide them as much as if you were just a person at home, just having one or two animals to take care of. A rescue needs volunteers. It needs people um, and so I do my best to handle everybody each day interact with them each day and so far uh, through the gosh I've been here since what for the small animals I'm gonna say small animals was starting in 2018 at the start of the year I've been here for almost two years doing this and I can tell you there has been times when an animal gets tamed very quickly and there's some that just take longer and you need to just focus mainly on them. Uh, but I try my best to give everybody the time that they need. Some people say I work too hard and I, I kind of agree here, especially since my health is <laughs> not doing so well right now. And it's also holiday season, so it's stressful. As you see, there is a living uh, world carrier in here and you're thinking, well, why is that in the do not use uh, pile? That's because it's cracked. And this is just for emergency purposes only. This this is a really major flaw I wanna talk about more. And then of course you guys see the metal wheel in here. I'm gonna make an educational video about it, showing you guys that these wheels, this one in particular, is very dangerous. It's not just the bumblefoot, it is the uh, mount that it, you currently see, the side mounts instead of uh, just an open wheel. It's not open at all. You have to get around the wires here. Oh, I'll talk about that later. You don't want to hear the bad now. But yeah, I just got some things in here. I got some things from the critter trails that I like to keep around because eventually I'm going to make an updated um, a wheel video. I would like that. Especially since that's a KT, that's a KT, and that's a mistake. 
But yeah, I just have, even though I'm currently uh, using this like once in a blue moon, um, I still have this in my do not use pile. Next, we got the cleaning section and that's my travel bag right there that I used. I got it from Petco. I haven't found one anywhere else, but if I find another one, I would like using it. Um, but yeah, this is my cleaning supplies right here. This is too big. Uh, of hives to be able to be put into uh, storage, so they're just kind of out on the shelving unit right now. That's a really big wheel that can't go anywhere else right now. And then these are my carriers, and I even labeled them as carriers so people are aware they're carriers because they're next to my other carriers over here. I wish you guys could see, it's kind of dark over here, but we've got the extra large or large carriers from Living World, and then the small carriers from Living World. So that's what we have here. By the way, this style and this style, especially this style, great great travel carriers, uh, especially since you see that they have the water holder right there, and that one actually works very well. And it's so easy to just, just pop off and then put back on and then clean the pan out. It's, it's such a breeze for traveling. I like it a lot. And this one is a good design here too. Now, if we were to say, for instance, look up to that thing, that thing is not a good travel carrier, but I am keeping it for educational purposes. And that's because it is too far up. And if uh, a hamster were to climb without the uh, ledges in there and without the tubes, they could fall and hurt themselves. So the two tier KT cage, no, I will not use for a carrier. If there was ever like a fire and I didn't have enough carriers, however, I have a lot of carriers as you can see and some they're currently being cleaned today that, you know, I would use it. But if we take a look over here, there are some wheels not in use and some standees up there. And then that is the cage that Chomps came in. Oh, I wanted to show you guys how I cleaned that and I ended up being so frustrated that I didn't want to film because it was just a mess taking apart, cleaning it, and then trying to put it back together. You could tell by the anger in my voice. And like I said here before, that is my air purifier. If anybody wants to know the brand, this is IQ Air. Um, and then this is, of course, my calendar, my hamster calendar. Oh, I love it a lot. Very cute. We'll come over here. There's an empty 40 gallon breeder right here with some um, surprises yeah I'm doing a Christmas theme hopefully this year um, just because last year did I do one last year you know I think I attempted to do one last year but never filmed it but anyways I'm just deciding forest theme frosty theme or Santa theme I think I'm going with Santa but anyways there's that then over here we have waffles waffles uh, is I want to say in there right now but oh my gosh she's been loving uh, her new setup uh, she was in a bin cage and she didn't really like it and I'm wondering if it's because these are kind of harder to see through maybe she actually likes seeing through stuff especially since uh, their eyesight is very poor so they rely on the other senses but this is the night angel cage that you guys have seen me talk about review and then underneath here we have storage so even more stuff we got that we got that we got this yeah we got a lot of stuff and we have these in here now this is for the night angel and then the uh, shelves you see right here are for the previews we don't really use them but we just keep them around and then let's go check out the guineas. Hey, oh, you're all gone now. <laughs> but we are currently waiting on fleece right now because I just recently purchased fleece. Oh, you guys, I just cleaned that this morning. I just spot cleaned this whole thing. They like to go over here, they like to go over there, and they like to go over here. But hey, look, at least they're keeping their main area nice and clean. So I appreciate that. But that's their hay bin. Uh, I actually had a jar, really big jar, where they can easily go inside of and get the hay. But I thought this was pretty cool because you could just put the hay on top and have them eat it up, go in here, pull it out. I mean, it's it's a hay trough and I love it. And it also makes for a hide too because there's a hide right over here. And I also rotate these hides around, but these are the only hides that I had currently. And of course they really love. <laughs> the little log here. I got two water bottles in here uh, just because you want to make sure that you have two. Uh, one for each piggy and you want to have eight ounce, you know, 12 ounce, 14 ounce bottles. Um, these are just eight ounce bottles and they've been working exceptionally well. I only have to, uh, if they work on one bottle, just replace that one bottle and then once that one runs out, replace that bottle. It's really nice. And then of course we got some chew toys in here. They got their little ball that they've been... <gasps> Did you get them all out? Oh, you did, you got it all out. Now I have to put some more in here. They've been very nice. Hi, sweetheart. Butter's here, she likes giving me kisses. Yeah, yeah, look at that. 
Look at that, she, she is so sweet, I love her. Rumble here has been coming out of her shell as well. Um, Butters is more friendly. Rumble is like, you know, I love you, you provide food, but don't touch me. <laughs> but yeah, that's Butters, hi Butters. Then over here, we have the bins, cages, preview cages, all these things not in use. And these are the bins that I currently have to DIY still because I haven't really touched them. And they still have the drilled holes in the lids. For those of you who are not aware, I did not have the proper tools for cutting lids and I actually broke a bunch of lids and I was just devastated. So I had to poke a bunch of holes in them um, until I was able to find an actual tool that helped me create amazing bins and I did. And I I found it at Harbor Free Tools. Oh my gosh, it's been a blessing. Oh, especially with these lids. Oh, these lids, ah! But yeah, this is what it is right here. This is just my storage. And then on top, you see the wheels. I have more wheels and I've been running out of room. So I have to figure out my setup. Sorry if this keeps going out of focus. But I have to figure out my setup for these poor wheels here because I just, I keep getting more wheels and I keep running out of room. But the big wheels are usually here, the smaller wheels are usually down there. But this is what I have. I have a lot of really big Syrians now so I've been buying more of the, which you are not seeing right now because they are all in use or being cleaned. The Carolina Storm Wheels. But this is just my little storage up here. And then next we can go and introduce you to who is currently here right now. These guys don't really have a name on their bin yet. Um, but these are Merida, Aurora, and then Cinderella. And these are the Syrian baby female hamsters. They are currently four weeks of age as of right now. So they have a little bit longer to stay with each other. And then around the seven to eight week old mark, they are gonna be separated and they are going into their own bins. And around the eight week old mark is when I'll be able to properly list them. However, this is one of the worst litters I have had. The 10 hamster litter was the worst, but these guys are just so squirmy. And then Aurora screams like bloody murder. <laughs> oh, it's just awful. Just seeing how squiggly they are. Oh, it just, it's not a good situation at all and they are the result of breeding pet store hamsters together but the person didn't breed them what the person claimed was he got them from the pet store when the mother was already pregnant so there's that and then up here we have flower she's still in oh wait no she's not in quarantine anymore take that off oh gosh okay she's not in quarantine anymore and she has a tunnel system and she absolutely loves it so that's why she has so much bedding in there um she's not really much of a climber so we just took out things that she wasn't using oh look there there she is right here. Hey, Flower. Yeah, we were talking about you. She is so friendly. Now her owner, I feel so bad because when interacting with him, he really loved her and he donated all of his supplies and that means he really cares a lot and he appreciated what we were doing so much. So it's just unfortunate that his job required him to be out on the road for way too many hours driving a big rig and it just, it broke my heart because it's just, when you get a new job, you really don't know how that's gonna change your life and unfortunately, he just thought it was in the best interest to let her go to somewhere and someone who would better care for her But he did an amazing job with raising her because she is so friendly So she is the friendly gentle flower that's available for adoption as of right now next we have mine now This is crackle. He is over a year old now. Yep. He's from the ginger slitter He used to be named chuckles But then I kept calling chuckles crackle because they looked exactly the same and the crackle that was adopted was changed to possum so I just changed him over from Chuckles to Crackle because it's totally fine. Uh, he's in a very dark corner, but if you guys are wondering, this is the Lixit Haven cage without the tubes. You can see I've kind of blocked off the tubes up there. This is under 600 square inches. However, with Crackle, he is stunted. He has stunted growth and his activity levels are very minimal. And I think that has a lot to do with uh, his organs and his heart. I don't want to over push him. I don't want to give him a really big setup. So just being, I think this cage is what? Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. Is it 548 square inches or 568? It is in the 500 range, but it is just slightly below 600 square inches, which I usually really like for Syrians. But this 
would be a dwarf cage if not for Crackle using it. And I don't know if you can see, Crackle is in there. But anyways, we got plenty of things for him to do, to climb. He's not really much of a climber, but he seemed to like climbing into that because he dragged all of his bedding in there and it used to be dirt only. But we got the hammock, we got the 9.5 inch wheel, which he's able to fit in. And we just got his other hammock back there because he really likes that one, the climbing one. Water bottle, all of this stuff. Oh yeah, I woke him up. You can't really see him, but you can see his face there just looking at you. Next we have, yes, the little bean cage. If you guys remember little bean. <laughs> I did a mistake. I uh, put everything over on this side and then I closed the lid and then I looked at it. I'm like, oh wait, it's hard for me to see it because this is not on the back side. But it's okay, it's okay. But anyways, hey, hey Rosebud. She is very active. Very friendly. She does get spooked inside her enclosure, but you can handle her. Um, but she's just kind of a girl that I feel like would be good in a quiet environment. I feel like too much noise and too many people and too many animals would overstimulate her because of her Roboroski nature. But nope, that's her. And she is just having a blast. This is her setup here. She dragged all that bedding over there. Look at that. Look at that big pile. <laughs> She's very happy. She's like a little princess, little speedy princess. Yeah. And then next we have my boy Hannibal. So he's got the little heart next to his name here. And Hannibal, he either likes to go in there or over here. Now Hannibal is over two years old now. And so he is going to be three years old uh, next year, but he is two years and a couple months old. And so he does have a hunchback. He does still travel, he's active for his age, but you can definitely tell his fur has thinned and he is looking raggedy and old. You, you could just tell by looking at him when they get older that they don't look like their youthful self, but yeah, no, he's still around and I'm happy because gosh, I've had him the longest. He is the longest survivor of my personal hammies because right now we only have um, him and Crackle left. Sahara did pass away this summer, so that was really unfortunate. And also um, Reinhardt. I didn't really talk about Reinhardt much because it was during our move that he kind of passed away, I think right before the move. And so I just, I wasn't really in a good mood. So poor Reinhardt. But in here, this is where, Oh gosh, did I not put his name up? <gasps> oh no, I'm a bad, bad person. <laughs> but usually I put their names up in the right corner. But Stitch is a male long-haired Syrian. He is in here, you've probably seen him on Instagram. He likes going in his hide over there. Uh, he doesn't seem like he uses this one at all. I know other Syrians in the past like using that. They have big enough entryway for them to fit. Or else he likes to sleep back here, but he's not back there. But this is where he is at. Sorry, it's I know it's so dark. But anyways, in here, this is is uh, Echo and she's the longest resident in here. She is looking for a fabulous home if anybody wants to give her one. And so, oh my gosh, you have made a mess of your enclosure. Look at you, oh my goodness. But anyway, she's in here. And then we have quarantine right now, pregnancy watch Mary. And now we have just a couple more days until it's the 30th. And so we're just hoping, crossing fingers, that she is not pregnant because we do not want to have pups. If you guys aren't aware, just go watch the Mary and Pippin video. Then you'll be caught up. And Lastly, we have bum, 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 Bruno, which he was out earlier. Oh no, he's right there. Oh, hello, Bruno. Hello. He is so sweet. He was so skittish when he came to us. Oh, it broke my heart, but we've been working with him. He's been out when we're out and that is making such good progress. He's taking treats from us and everything. He is calming down and walking in our hand. He is still freaked out by smelling us, but he is making really good progress. And then this is my trash over here. Oh boy. And I think that is it. Yeah, this is the room. Um, Let's see, is there anything else I forgot? Oh, actually, yes, I kind of did skip over this part up here. So let me just talk about it. This right here is what Rosebud came in. I'm still in the process of making that video um, because you guys still aren't introduced on YouTube to Rosebud yet. So I wanted to show you what she came in. This is what we use for traveling with with the guinea pigs. This I was gonna review. I am, I don't know. I think I might just wanna get rid of that. But that's a tank topper. I just, I, 
I don't know. You know, I thought I was gonna make the video and then ended up not making the video and I don't know if I'm ever gonna make the video that I wanted to make. So I might just scrap it and then buy it to review later um, because that was a part of a surrender intake that I have yet to do. I just have so much to do and it's just so much time. Um, and then that is for the uh, Lixit, all those colorful bits right there. It Unfortunately, when we got the cage, it didn't come with everything, but it came with the majority of the stuff. There's just a few missing ladders. But yeah, that this part I didn't talk about, but there you guys go. But yeah, I think this is it. This is it. Just one more look around. There we are. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video about the little pet room tour for my rescue and also since I have my personals in here, my two personals right there, uh, just hit like to show support. Comment down below with anything you would like to say today. Uh, and if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the future, future, future. Bye-bye.